What is up, you guys? Of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with yours truly, the Skyrender. And today we're going against Joshua. And Joshua is actually, um, he's a long-time follower, or uh, he's been on my friend list for quite some time. Uh, he usually brings pretty higher-tier team, and uh, I must say that, you know, he did not disappoint this time. Uh, you know, he has been, like, part of my... Like friends list for a few months to be honest, and I never even took him away because he actually brings some quality battles, and uh, it's a great way for me to beta test my team. And I constructed a real RU team this time, and uh, I really wanted to try it out. I got recycled DNA, which I called Cupcake. It is awesome and it's work great. But look at his team here, pretty standard. Uh, he's not a smoking player, obviously, with Aegis last being there. But I got Rolling Wash, of course, Aegis Slash, and uh, Mega Metagross, Talonflame, Snorlax, and Swampert. And um, he actually have two Mega Stones. He got both Swampert and the Mega Metagross, but uh, obviously me mentioning Mega, Mega Metagross means that it's going to go down like that. I myself using Bronzong, Mega Pidgeot, Drogology, like I said, they're DNA with Recycle, uh, Tyrantrum with Assault Vest, and uh, Kikaleon with Assault Vest. So, two Assault Vesters to be able to wall things out, and obviously looking at his team, not going to help a lot here, because he has three physical attackers. So, shame on me. <laughs> but really here, I'm just gonna start off like I usually do, and start off with uh, Bronze Song, because I need to get rocks up. Because we got a freaking Talonflame here, and I did expect him to start off with Talonflame. And if that was the case, then I can wall it out, because I got heat proof after all. So, without further ado guys, let's actually get into the battle. So, this was actually a really strange game, because it was fantastic and pretty weird at the same time. And he's gonna start here with the Swampert, and I'm just gonna fake it, like I usually do, and uh, hope for him not going for an Earthquake. He actually goes for the Muddy Water here, and uh, it took me off guard in that sense that since I'm... I am especially defensive, I really didn't care for it, but at the same time it felt really weird. I know it's not a special set by any means necessary, so I think this is an in-game Swampert, sadly, and um, I am very able to deal with this rather easily, and I'm just going to Toxic it and get the momentum needed to be able to cope with it. Obviously here, uh, I do stress him out pretty darn early here, and uh, he will decide to switch out to his Talonflame, consider that he got no whatsoever switching for... Um, Oh, what's it called? Um, since he got no rapid spinner whatsoever, there is no reason for him to switch out. And I did see that coming, so I'm gonna switch out my, on my own. But I did not expect, of course, uh, he go and bring the Talon Flame. So I'm going to uh, my Rex, which is a Salt Vested Tyrant Room, and it is very, very, you know, manageable to deal with Talon Flames. And of course, being a Salt Vested means I can wall things out. And I'm just gonna, you know, with a strong job boosted. Uh, Crunch gonna go for that because I have no rock moves on this. Uh, I sadly decided to dispose of them in uh, conjunction for better filler attacks, and Outrage is my strongest move in that regard. And um, yeah, basically, Crunch do the 50%, which means that I am forced to go for an Outrage here because he will keep going for Roost and he will finish it off with an Overheat. I felt it was really weird to consider that he might as well go for a U turn. But then again, it is dead by default, so you no, know, my mistake really. And, um, of course, I do take him out here, and I get confused right off the bat, which is really, really good, because I did not want to stay in for another hit. I want to switch out safely here. And here's the Rotom. I was expecting him to go for a Hydro Pump or a Volt Switch, to be honest, because I felt like that was the best move to do. But he's actually going for a Will Wisp, and uh, pretty much uh, actually shutting down my Cypher. Cypher is um, an Assault Vest that actually on with Drain Punch, uh, Knock Off, stuff like that. And it sadly didn't get to showcase itself, and with the Will-O-Wisp, it pretty much makes it useless. I have no heal bell or stuff like that, I really didn't. I didn't see the Will-O-Wisp coming, I definitely didn't. And I'm just gonna go for a knockoff, and uh, here's when I realized that uh, he is carrying the Mega Stone. Because every poke had an item on it, but obviously I'm not knocking off anything here. 
So he's gonna go for Rock Slide, I mean that's a fair move to do, I guess, he could flinch me after all. So I'm just gonna go for Drain Punch here, and yeah, I'm, I'm still burned, so that is pathetic, <laughs> to be honest. But as the poison will whittle him down, the burn will whittle me down, so I really didn't see myself surviving another turn, so I'm just gonna go for Shadow Sneak, you know, getting as much damage as possible in there, I, I have to do it, basically. And the reason I have Shadow Sneak over uh, Sucker Punch is because if I use Knock Off, then I'm very likely to be attacked by fighting moves, so Shadow Sneak makes me wall that out. So it's a very safe way to um, to defend yourself. So anyway, so sadly, Cacklin didn't get to showcase itself, but here comes Jeros, the Mega Pidgeot! And I really, the reason I would just went into it was because it was definitely my safest bet to get a Mega Evolution raw off the bat and do the best of it, really. Plus I went for an ominous win, you know, trying to get the boots as always, yet to happen, that's only 10%, but I don't know, one day, one day this will happen. So anyway, Snorlax is here, and I really didn't want to take any damage from this thing, and he's actually gonna screw me over here, because most rest Shesto Snorlax are fixed fat and do not carry immunity. And um, I'm gonna go for Toxic Care and he's gonna show off that he got immunity, so I started to relax. Because I thought, alright, I can at least start attacking him, but it has Belladrum. It has freaking Belladrum, and uh, I basically let him set up on me. And uh, the only thing I can do now is go for an Iron Head and hope for flinch. That is, that is my only way. So I do flinch him the first time here. So I was like, alright, one more flinch, and I got him. Come on, come on, do it, Bronzong, do it! Nope. He pulls the rest off, and I'm basically in trouble. I have no way of safe switching into a body slam at all, and I know that it could carry Earthquake or Crunch, so I'm gonna decide to stay for one turn, you know, just getting some damage there, and I wanna see its filler move. But then again, I just realized I might as well, actually, I'm very lucky they flinched there, but I might as well sack off Tyrantrum, because Tyrantrum can't really deal with either Mega Metagross or the... Um, Aegis Slash on his team, so I'm set, I fell for it. I might as well sack him. And uh, it really, really sucks because it's an amazing poke, it really is. So I go into my Dragology here, thinking that Draco Meteor might be my best bet here, taking it out. Adaptability and specs should be enough. I thought that is terrible, and uh, this body slam will obliterate me, so I lost two important pokes for, for the ending turns, really. And they were pretty much, you know, unscratched from the default there. So, I'm just gonna go into Jeros and go for that Hurricane, finish it off. And I really felt that was my safe, safest bet, really. It really were. So, anyway, Rotom is here, and I did expect him to maybe go for a Volt Switch, but I wouldn't take any risk if you wanna go for anything else. I'm just gonna go for a Hyper Beam. I know the Mega Man is gonna come in after this, I know that, but I also know a Meteor Mash won't kill me. Uh, I am defensive enough to be able to deal with that, but. I still have a huge issue, I really do, because even if I work against the Mega Metagross, I have no Pokemon that you know can cope with it, and as long as he got Bullet Punch, my Mega um, Pidgeot can't do anything at all actually, because it is in the range of dying by default, and the Dedene, I know it can't really deal with it either, uh, I'd really want to find out what kind of moves it has, so I go into my Reminol, and I'm just gonna go for an EQ, I really felt that that is probably my only way of damaging that thing. And it shows me the hammer arm, which is okay, because now I know at least that he got hammer arm, bullet punch, meter mash. So I need to see him use another move. And I am able to take another meter mash if that's the case due to leftovers. Plus, you know, he's losing speed, so I might be able to speed or to outspeed. But he actually goes for send headbutt here, probably not thinking about my typing. And, um. It won't matter though, like I said, I would have survived another hammer on from the get-go, so I would still only get roughly two hits anyway, because now he's obviously still is able to outspeed and hammer arm will actually kill me here after that send headbutt. So yeah, at this point I was just like, alright, I need to do something. Dedene is my only Pokemon left that can probably take a bullet punch, and I'm just gonna go for a charm, because I was thinking here that alright, I might not be able to, you know, kill it. But I might be able to force him out to his Aegislash, Slash, which it, I did. And I go and go for a Nuzzle here and paralyze this thing, because the only way for me to actually be able to uh, win against this Aegislash Slash is 
if I let him now set up a sword stats with a very short was gonna do and then afterwards see if he attack me and get fully paralyzed so he's uh, is out of his stance and then let my PJ hit him that was my only only entry to do here and he gets fully paralyzed first turn I was thinking here all right I I'm off the hook but no he goes for a shadow sneak pretty much I think I had him stressed out so much that he forgot about my typing and just did a very very bad move and obviously it was bad enough for him to lose his Aegis Slash right there and then but then again I can't do anything with my Mega Pedriot against this Mega Metagross so I'm still in a very very rough shape because Dedene like I said has no real attacking move we got Super Fang to be able to take a lot of damage but after that I only got Nuzzle as an attacking move so my way to go here was to get a charm up and uh, yeah he goes for a send headbutt and um, it is almost in the range of taking me out so I gotta go for a cycle getting back my citrus berry and he goes for meteor mash and ooh, I barely lived that and you know the citrus is kicking in together of course with the sheep poach and uh, I was thinking right here and then, alright, I can't really let him uh, get an attack boost, so I'm just going to go for a Nussle, and uh, I do fully paralyze him here, which means that I, I won, yes, I did, it, it is amazing, it, it's incredible, it is, it is so cool that I actually did it, he killed a Mega Metagross, like what, how? Yeah, I, I'm not going to lie here, it's really obvious that my opponents had, you know, he grasped the meta game. He sure did, but he was not expecting uh, either the Bronze Song or Dedene to be able to cope with him. And of course, Charm on Dedene is the best way to go to be able to shut down, you know, the hard-hitting sweepers, and then use Recycle to try to recover back on. And uh, yeah, I really should consider have an other attack with the Nussle. Uh, but then again, I need a paralyzation. I was thinking of Nussle or Toxic, but had I had Toxic hair, I would have lost from the get-go. I really would have. So, yeah, Dedene came through, and uh, considering my previous battles where Dedene got decimated by Meta Mega Metagross, this was actually really cool to see Dedene, you know, standing up and actually doing... He was the game changer, wasn't he? Because he got paralyzation on both AG Slash and the Mega Metagross, and he got fully paralyzed at the right points. So Dedene, truly the MVP of this battle, and it was incredible. I love that poke so much. And obviously me screwing up against that belly drum made this battle much more closer than it needed to be. And I felt that throughout the battle that I should have, you know, been more aggressive than I really were. So major props to my opponent, very good played, and uh, yeah, that is basically it. And, you know, I want to thank everybody for watching, of course. And uh, don't forget to leave a like as always, and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. And remember, the sky is the limit. So have a good day, guys, and take care, alright? Bye.